Welcome to GDP's Artificial Intelligence 2020. This is a video demonstration of Project 1, addressing the classes lectured by James Kelly. Project 1 is about basic steering behaviors and decision making. This solution is an AI driven first person shooter inspired by games such as Descent from 1995. Let's move over to the simulation where we can see the AI behaviors in action. Open our Bell Engine solution and run Game Project. As the game loads, the player can control the mouse and WASD keys to move around. Here we can see an enemy that's shooting at us, he steers at us, approaches, finds our direction and shoots towards it. We have this class of blue enemies that will pursue the player no matter what and it will also evade attacks from the player. We'll see more in detail. The yellow enemies are enemies that are using Wandering, so they will move until they will reach a target, idle for 3 seconds, then pick another location and drive towards that. There's another type of enemy, which is the red enemy. This enemy is running away from the player as I'm facing towards it. But if I look around somewhere else, it will come back for me. Like this. This is the same behavior as Boo from Mario. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the enemies isolated. Okay, going back to our solution here, um, the most important pieces of the code um, are located in game system AI. Uh, there is an idea here in this engine to have separate systems to handle things in the game. So if you check it out, the header for game system AI, you see that this class inherits from system AI, which contains the basic behaviors that we are using to make the AI in the game. And then um, this system AI here will be called by the loop, the main loop of the game, that will update all the enemies and generate enemies during runtime, whatever the AI needs to do. So in the top of the code, we have a couple of defines here that can be used to manipulate the game. If you want to tweak it, you can use these defines. Uh, we'll be using these defines here to isolate each type of enemy and take a, a, a better look at them as they, as they move during the game. And we'll be following the project scope to see every type of enemy in the game, so types A, B, C, and D. So, um, okay, so let's go back to the code here. And then for now, I will disable enemies types B, C, and D from the game by setting their max number to zero, so they will not be generated at all.
now I will build and run the game and we should be able to see the red enemies the first red enemies um, if you wanna see the colliders of this thing you can press F1 on the keyboard and press toggle colliders and then you see the bounding boxes in the environment and if you fly towards these guys here we can see the enemies we can see that I'm approaching him and he's moving away that's flee and if I face away from him he should be moving back like this you can see that each time I turn he gets close and to the point that he steers away from me that's the first enemy simple as that marking these requirements oh sorry this requirement okay let's move over to type B type B should be able to pursue the player and evade the closest bullets fired by the player so we'll move back to our solution we want to have three of these enemies these enemies should be blue on the screen all the enemies will be able to uh, orient themselves towards the players so here they're moving here they're moving towards me you can see this one getting closer if you take a look at the front of the ship you see that they are turning towards me and if I shoot they will evade they will evade and change course with this it's hard to hit them because of that behavior they will steer look at that uh, to shoot the players by the way use the mouse left button Look at that. Yeah. This is enemy type B, and they will collide against the player and kill the player if uh, here, like this. We got teleported to the beginning of the game. So let's move on to the type C enemies. So let's see the type C enemy. I'll change the define here to three enemies of type C. Save our file and run. As you can see here there's one type C enemy here, he's approaching us. Camera. This is a T fighter. So he approaches, stays at a certain radius and shoots towards. Like this. There's two of them, three of them. I can shoot back at them. If I shoot, they will get destroyed. Like this. They are already respawned again in the arena. That's how a shooter should be in this case. Let's type C, and if we get shot, we'll be moved to the center of the arena and we start again.
and the fourth type of enemy is the enemy type D uh, the D enemy should be wandering around and then um, it will idle for three seconds then wander again okay so that's the enemy that's yellow in our environment we'll see him a bit back into the arena you can see this yellow enemy flying around the UFO we pick it a point using the wonder function and he's driving towards it let's follow him now he's idling for three seconds and then picked another point another target and he's moving towards it Let's wait until he stops for another idle climb. Now he's idling again. Picked another point and he's moving towards another location. That's enemy type D. We can also be destroyed if we shoot at it. Okay, great. Great, so now we'll take a quick peek to each uh, of the enemy's update function. Check what's happening here. So, as I showed before, we have an update function in our uh, AI system that will call the update target, update NPCs so the targets being um, the camera, us and the NPCs being the enemies if you go to the NPCs here you can see the finds here in action and an if else here for each of the enemies like A, B, C and D if you look into enemy of type A for example enemy of type A will check if we are facing towards it and if we're not then it will seek us else it will flee the enemy will always be orienting itself towards the camera the type B enemy will always pursue always pursue and it will find out if there is a bullet close to it and if there is if it's in within the, a certain distance here it will evade the bullet and then it will orient itself towards the camera and then uh, do the physics update which is the date over time for velocity and position and so on Type C enemy, same thing, it will always seek and it will check if it's within a certain range from the player and if it is, then fire against the player, it will stop and fire um, Orient to the player, then do the physics update and the fourth enemy is a little bit different but it's the same idea it has a state machine the enemy type D is inherits from the NPC here so the type D enemy has a state machine with three states begin move wandering and ISO so when the enemy is in the begin move stage the enemy picks a point in the environment and starts moving towards it using the update function at the end of the code here um, then if it's wandering it will check the distance to its target and if it's within a certain range from the target 
then it will change to idle, so it will halt its movement, change to idle, and in the next update we'll have this case here, which is if it's in idle, then it checks how long it's been on idle, so it checks if it's within 3 seconds, if 3 seconds have been elapsed, and if it's passed, then it will change its state to begin move, which will throw him again to the beginning of the, the switch case. It will pick another point, then do that all over again. That concludes our presentation. For more information on this course or this project, reach out to James Kelly or Felipe Bellini at Fenchel College. Thank you.